Twitter doesn't want me to tell you about the new mandates that are coming out in different countries around the world. And they probably don't even want me to tell you about the possible good news that's coming from this uh, Omicron variant of COVID-19. So, I know, sounds a little strange, huh? Well, let's see uh, what's going on. As you know, Jack Dorsey has just stepped down as of yesterday. And so, there's a new guy at the helm. and, uh, And wouldn't you know it, The day after, Twitter announces more censorship for the sake of public interest, right? So, you know, this is uh, this is what it says. Twitter has updated its policy on personal information to cover videos and photos of private individuals shared without their consent, unless that is done by legacy media in public interest or other context they approve of. Sharing personal media, such as images or videos, can can potentially violate a person's privacy and may lead to an emotional or physical harm. The misuse of private media can affect everyone, but can have a disproportionate effect on women, activists, dissidents, and members of minority communities, Twitter's safety division said on Tuesday. Um... The company has thus decided to add media of private individuals without the permission of persons depicted to the category of personal information not allowed on the platform. Addresses, identity documents, phone numbers, emails, and bank information of private individuals have already been banned under Twitter's doxing policy. So, you know, uh, in other words, um, if uh, Biden gets his feelings hurt, uh, because of a meme that is uh, put out there, I assume uh, he could he could he could cry, and uh, and they would cry with him, and they would have this whole big safe room meeting, and then uh, they would take the picture down, ban you from Twitter, and uh, you know, cry together. Anyway, uh, so what's going on with COVID, uh, Germany? Their next head wants MPs to decide on mandatory vaccination by the year's end. So it says here, incoming German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, I'm sure I said that wrong, has suggested MPs could soon vote on a compulsory vaccination program as part of a big push against COVID-19. Neighboring Austria adopted similar legislation earlier in November. It is important for Germany to introduce general compulsory vaccination, Scholes told a meeting between the federal government officials and the heads of the German states on Tuesday. He also called on MPs to come forward with a cross-faction initiative to set things in motion and which should be introduced quickly. Scholes also said that as an MP himself, he would agree to such a measure. According to the Social Democratic Party, which Scholes belongs to, mandatory vaccination should be introduced once everyone has a realistic chance of being vaccinated twice. The party believes such a time might come in early February 2022. The new government coalition that includes the SPD, the Green Party, and the Free Democrats is currently working on a draft bill on compulsory vaccination for certain jobs together with the health ministry, German media said um, the bill is to be discussed by the Bundestag, the lower house of the German parliament, next week. So uh, that's what's going on in Germany. However, in Greece, uh, as you see this headline say, Greece reveals age groups to be fined monthly if unvaccinated. So I'll just uh, read the, the top part of this. Older people in Greece who fail to get vaccinated against COVID-19 will face a monthly fine of 100 pounds, which would be, uh, I guess, $113.64 USD, at least at this particular moment of the article. Uh, Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitotakis, I can't say that, announced on Tuesday, in the first of such measures imposed imposed by an EU country, To start, COVID vaccines will be mandatory for individuals age 60 and over as Greece seeks to protect its health service from a potential resurgence of the virus throughout the coming winter months. 
The Prime Minister's announcement marks the first measure in the EU to target a specific age group with mandatory vaccination as officials seek to protect at-risk individuals and emergency workers from COVID. Defending the decision, Mitsotakis, whatever his name is, uh, stated that it was the price to pay for health and that it was important to make the COVID jab mandatory to protect elderly Greeks who have not yet been vaccinated. <clears throat> we are focusing our efforts on protection of our fellow citizens, and for this reason, their vaccination will be mandatory from now on, uh, they stated. Uh, over 60s who have failed to book their appointment for a first COVID vaccine dose by uh, January 16th will face a monthly recurring fine of 100 pounds. Uh, they, I can't say the name, uh, called the penalty a matter of protection and not punishment. How do you like that? You know, to make things safe, right? So, as we know, uh, there's a new variant that is uh, taking the, the, the world, the globe, by storm. And, um, you know, it's really raised up a lot of concerns, a lot of fears, and me, I'm the, I'm the type of person I would rather sit back and, and truly get, you know, some information come in on something before I start jumping to conclusions. And uh, one of the things that I had learned um, throughout all of this with, uh, with COVID-19 and how this has rolled out, uh, one of many things that I've learned about uh, viruses and mutations and stuff like that, that commonly... Uh, what will happen is viruses will mutate, um, but they will mutate in, in two ways. Um, they'll become more infectious and less deadly. And this is because the, the virus itself wants to survive, and the virus cannot survive in your body if your body's dead. The virus will die too. So the virus doesn't want to kill you. Right? It just wants to be able to survive and, and reproduce and whatever with you. Well, that's why typically, and I'm not saying every single time, but typically science has shown that viruses, when they mutate, they may become more infectious, more transmissible, right? But in many, many cases, they become less effective. They, they don't, uh, they're not as deadly. They're not as harmful. But we don't know. I mean, this, this is something new. This just came around. So there's still a lot of time that needs to be, you know, spent studying it. Um, but I'm not just speaking out of my butt here or, or talking, you know, among myself. I, I do have backup here. Uh, another article, and I'll link all these articles in the description. Um, another article here coming out of RT, new Omicron variant could spell the end for COVID-19 pandemic, top, says a top Russian scientist. And so I saw this article and I thought, wait a minute, I, I need to read that. And it was just as I suspected uh, he, he was going to say it. So let me just kind of read the beginning of it and go from there. Uh, a new mutant strain of COVID-19 that has sparked fears for vaccine resistance, caused flight cancellations, and sent the stock market plummeting could actually help bring the pandemic to an end, a Russian virologist has claimed. In an interview published on Monday in Moscow tabloid KP, Antony and, uh, let's see, Austin, uh, and I'm sure I said that way wrong, uh, a virologist for the Gamalea Research Institute of Epidemiology and Microbiology, which pioneers Russia, uh, which pioneered Russia's Sputnik V jab, said that there is still not clear how deadly or infectious the new Omicron variant might be. According to him, even if it does spread faster than its predecessor, known as Delta, it could take months to become the predominant form of the virus. Even if that happens, he said, it's not clear that Omicron means higher death tolls than at present. Right now, there are reasons to think that Omicron variant could be less pathogenic. He went on, meaning less able to cause harmful infection. Explaining the science behind the hypothesis, uh, he said that we already seen Omicron has many mutations, more than Delta, uh, more than 30,000 in a single gene of its spike protein. This is too many, and it means the virus has an unstable genome. As a rule, this sort of infectious agent becomes less dangerous because 11, uh, ev 
evolutionarily wow that was, i don't know why it was hard for me to put that word together in my head to say it evolutionarily an overwhelming number of mutations leads to a weakening of the virus's ability to cause disease so that's that's essentially just what i was i was telling you according to the professor if this rule holds true then omicron would be fatal in only a small fraction of cases and would become like other common seasonal infections he stressed that we still understand little about the new variant discovered by south african scientists last week and that it was best to be cautious while uh, or, yeah while its characteristics are researched some nations including japan and israel have announced they are banning all foreign travelers uh, we shouldn't be afraid that the Omicron variant is spreading widely, said Professor. Uh, said the professor. I'm not trying to say his name because I uh, don't even know to, how to begin there. Uh, but that it could turn out to be the most pathogenic variant, making infection worse. So we'll see. You know, only time will tell on this. But uh, as as nature and history has shown. Um, you know these type of, of viruses typically become less harmful over time so we'll see that's that's all we can do um, but that is good news but on the same token you know I have to ask the question and I know there's a lot of knee-jerk reactions going on and there's a lot of governments that's just trying to see what control they can while they can but at the same time um, I think I think a lot of the world needs to take a pause and and take a look at this and take a look at the science they're they're always telling you to you know look at the science that's what i would like to do i would just like to look at the science and i would appreciate if uh twitter would allow me to tell you that anyway i hope you all have a good day shalom